Okay, as promised, I'm just going to whiz through a bit of data uh, for you. This is a question, I guess you can find it on Moodle. I'd be jolly surprised if uh, Dr. Savile hasn't put it on there. Uh, this side is kind of AO1, and then this side is kind of AO2. I'm going to go through the AO1 stuff, because, you know, you should be able to do that all by yourselves. But here, in D, we've got a sequence of amino acids, and they've just been allocated letters. And it's been used to determine evolutionary relationships, so this is sort of the application of the evidence for uh, relatedness. Um, we've got the same sections of haemoglobin, each letter represents one amino acid. And it tells us that there are seven differences between these two species, B acutostrata, acutorostrata, and M gigas, whatever they are. Doesn't matter what they are, don't need to know anything. Three differences between P vitulina and M gigas, so I'm already thinking as I read that, ooh, this one's B. vitulina and M. gigas are more closely related because they are more similar. There are only three differences and these are less closely related. So first question, nice simple one, county. How many differences are there between P. vitulina and B. acutorostrata? So, highlighter is always useful. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Six differences. And so, pretty much when you're sort of doing a phylogenetic tree, they're trying to sort out how these three organisms are related. They're counting the differences between M. gigas and B. acutostrata, and between P. vitulina and M. gigas, and then just left you this one to do. You might have to do all of those. So, here we go. You've got six differences. Which species is more closely related to, to Foco vitulina? So we've got six differences there, three there, and seven there. So P. vitulina, that's this one, and this one. Three and six differences, it's uh, sorry, no, it's not. It's M. gigas. Read the question properly. M. gigas, only three differences. Use your answers to part D to complete the following phylogenic evolutionary tree. So, three differences, more recent common ancestry. So here, I'm just going to use a pencil for this if I can find one. I read a pencil a minute ago. Don't know what I've done with it. Anyway. Thank you to Dr. Garvey, the very organised Miss Pencil case. <laughs> so these two are going to be my M guy gas and my P vitulina, but I don't know whereabouts to put them. So that's three differences. And then we've got seven differences. Our biggest difference is between B acutostrata and M guy gas. So they're going to be the furthest apart from the tree. And then we've got six differences between P. vitulina and B. acutostrata. So six, so that tells us, the seven differences tells us where B. acutostrata is. It tells us that it's up at the top there. Oh, can't spell, acutorostrata. Yeah, do be careful that you can actually copy the spellings down, like I can't. <coughs> and then, so the one that's furthest away from that is M. gigas. And in the middle we've got P. vitulina. So does that work? We've got the right number of differences. So between P. vitulina and B. acutostrata we've got six differences. Seven differences, big as three. That kind of works for me. So that's kind of bringing it up into drawing conclusions about their relatedness from this. So that would probably be an AO3 kind of mark. Um, this is pretty much, this is counting, but because it, it's counting, that's maths. So that's AO2. And then interpreting 
data that one's also AO2. So enjoy and you know why wouldn't you look up to see what these organisms are? If you stick that into Google, their proper names into Google, you'll find out actually what they are, which would be amazing. <laughs>